What's up, guys? Welcome to the Voice of Boise Show, Episode 5, and I have the all-time winningest coach in Boise State basketball history, Coach Rice. Coach, thanks so much for coming on. Um, I've known you for you know through the years for a while, uh, being good friends with your son, um, but you've always been an inspiration to me with just just good culture tips you have and work ethic and drive. Um, so just to, just to kind of roll right into it, Coach, you know, you being the all-time winningest coach in Boise State basketball history, um, how does one, when you got here, I mean, of course the program wasn't already at the top as well, so how does one start to grow a successful culture, or how does one set the seeds in a program or business or whatever to grow a successful culture from step one to step ten? Well, you know, that, that's, a, that's a long question yeah. as, as far as uh, how long my answer could be with that, but but I think you have to, it starts with your vision and it starts with, you have to be able to see it and know what you want, know what it needs to look like, mm -hmm. and then be able to articulate that vision so everybody around you understands what you want. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and through the years, I've refined it and I've uh, dug down into it and, and um, just kind of made it. You know, we, I think I've shared with you before, we, we put together a culture book. So everything's down in mm -hmm. on paper of what, what we expect, what we want, mm -hmm. and what we want to look like on a daily basis and, and how mm -hmm. our actions and our habits reflect what our culture really is. Because that's what your culture is. is right. You know, everyone wants to know, like, you know, the, that word's thrown around so loosely now. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, everyone says, well, we got to change when they take a new job or they start a company. Or, well, we right. got to have the right culture. We got to well, what does that really mean? Well, to us, it means when we go to the gym, what does our gym look like and feel like? What do the players act? Yeah. How do they act? And and so that that was the vision I had when I took the job. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I made it as as I grew as a coach, I think I made it more and more where it's where it's clear and it's and my players. It doesn't matter what I think our culture is. It's what they do. Started with, you know, when I was looking at uh, coming to Boise State and, and taking this job, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was talking to some of my friends in the business because I really didn't want to leave Gonzaga. I was there for 11 years. Mm -hmm. I was Mark's associate head coach. Yeah. Our families were really intertwined, you know, as far as Mark and I would be gone doing our coaching stuff or recruiting or something, and our families would all hang kind of, out. Yeah, they'd move in together because the kids were all young, and yeah. the, you know the, the the wives would just kind of raise those kids together. And, yeah. Um, so it was really special, and I didn't want to leave that. And mm -hmm. and so uh, when I was talking to some of my mentors and peers in the coaching business, and I remember Dan Munson saying, you know, hey, understand this, you can create that in Boise. Huh. And I, it was almost like a light bulb went off like, yeah, that's true. I can. Interesting. And so that family atmosphere, that work ethic, that blue collar of who we were at Gonzaga, yeah. that was the vision I had. Um, so, I mean, you, I mean, so now you're saying Gonzaga. So let's, let, let's take that step. So you were at Gonzaga for how long? How 11 long? years. 11 years. Yeah. So take me through that experience because I know a lot of that place uh, embedded into you of what you brought to Boise State. So. What did you learn from that place? Because Gonzaga is, you know, you have Boise State in football. Gonzaga's like that in basketball right, with right. culture and stuff. So what did you take from there from culture and team and growing and, and all of that? Well, it was really neat because I got to be there, you know, at the start of Mark Few's career as a head coach. And, and I'd been a head coach before as a, at a junior college, so mm -hmm. I really felt like I could help him. Because you, if you haven't been a head coach, things are going to come up that you don't even think can come up and right. and just the experience of having somebody there that's been through it as a head coach and sat in that seat and mm -hmm. it, it, it's always valuable that's why I have a lot of guys on my staff that are head coaches or that uh, were head coaches because yeah. that they, they know what you're going through and they can give you better perspective uh, Mark and I have been great friends since like 1986 working camps wow. together yeah. and, and we were just kind of each other's mentor and helped each other out all those years of uh, of us kind of climbing the ranks of coaching together, and wow. so when he when he was set to take over, Dan Munson took the Minnesota job. Mark was set to become the head coach of Boise or at Gonzaga. He reached out to me, and I was a head coach at Yakima Valley Community College at the time. And he said, "Hey, why don't you come and be my assistant?" And wow. I'm like, "No, <laughs> <laughs> like no, I got a grade here. I got it. Right. Yeah, and." Uh, it was, you know, then I hung up the phone. I thought, well, 
No, number one, I think I can really help him, and I think he's going to need, you know, when, you, when you're taking on your first big job, For sure. you need people in the trenches with you that you can trust and that have your back. And So I, I hung up the phone, talked to my wife a little bit more about it, and mm -hmm. and she said, whatever you think's right. And, and I said, all right, let's do it. And so I called him back. And so you flash forward about 15 years later, they won the semifinal game at, at the Final Four, and they're going to the national championship. And... Mm -hmm. Uh, Mark and I are sitting alone in his room, uh, getting ready to go meet a few people downstairs, and, and get, he's getting ready to get his game plan. And we're sitting there, just the two of us, having a having a Corona light. Yeah. And we're all, all, on the TV. It flashes national championship game, Gonzaga versus North Carolina, and we looked at each other in this like, oh my God, this is where it's gone to now. Wow. And he looked at me and he said. And I had to twist your arm to come. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I was at a junior college and just the happiest can be. But but it was also a, a lesson That's of... That's an incredible story, man. Yeah, it, it was also a lesson of wherever I am, that's where I want to be. And I like being in it and I make the best of it. And, yeah. you know, it doesn't mean it was always easy at junior college. I mean, but like, I loved it there. And I, you know, somebody asked me when I got to Gonzaga and, you know, we went to like five sweet 16s and this and that. And they are like... Man, this must be, these wins must be just great. I mean, this must be so much, you know, uh, you must care so much about these wins. And I said, I cared equally about Yakima as I did at Gonzaga. Absolutely. It's just more people care about that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so it, uh, so for us, the, the reasons and the motivation, the perspective never changed. It was always about doing the best we can in the situation we were in and making it the best. And, yeah. and you know, we all know the story of Gonzaga. He's continued to grow it. And, right. And, you know, that's what we're doing in Boise. And it's Absolutely. never a, you know, it's never a straight path to the top. I mean, we had ups and downs. and mm -hmm. But you're always just striving to get better. And, and you don't know when that next big jump's going to be. And, right. And, you know, I feel that. That's the value of me being able to stay here for 11 years at Boise. Is, Absolutely, is we're making those steps, and now we got a new athletic director that's really going to help me elevate this program even more. And, and and we need to, we need to make those jumps. Absolutely, and that's one thing I do respect. I respect most about your coaches, just you know those awesome stories, your awesome relationships, um, and your intangibles in growing a culture. I mean, very quickly watching that championship game this year with Gonzaga. Yeah. Um, I mean. I don't think none of us really saw that coming. I, I kind of, I know I had Gonzaga winning that game. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I knew Baylor was very athletic. Yeah. Um, maybe quickly, I mean, what was your thoughts on that with just how that turned out of Baylor just coming out on the, <laughs> on the ball like that? Well, it was funny because uh, Stockton, you know, who we grew John with, Stockton? Yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, John Stockton, uh, he actually coached Max when I was uh, up in, in Spokane. So, okay. you know, through the years we've gotten to know him and, um, he, he, he called me the other day about something else unrelated. And so I, I you know, I answered, I was like, what's up, Co what's up stocks? And he says, uh, uh, well, God dang it. We were 32 and oh, and you showed up at the championship game and we lose. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I said, I had to be there for my guy, whether he lost or won, I was going to be there for coach few. <laughs> Right. support him and sure. you know I said I've been you know I've been there emotionally and spiritually with him all year but I had a job so I couldn't be you know at his other games and, yeah. I, and John says well I wish you would just kept it emotionally and spiritually <laughs> <laughs> he's blaming me for the loss of the national championship game I'm like yeah That's so, uh, <laughs> I told Huey that we were laughing together yeah, but, give me a uh, break man Jeez. yeah but it was there's so many people that wanted him to get that done and they wanted you know but what, what a uh, um, amazing season and it's so hard i mean one team wins it all out of 350 Man. and everybody else ends in a loss and you feel awful but what a year they had to what win all year. those games so to be back there and then you know after the game we got some time with mark and and got to you know just be there to kind of make him see the forest for the trees and absolutely what a remarkable job he did this year yeah so coach you we've always talked about off camera uh even early in my entrepreneurship career about the the so what now what mentality, mm -hmm. uh, blue collar, um, really a lot of elements to this book yeah. um, that you always give to your players and to me as well too, um, and that's the Unbreakable Culture book. So kind of touch on 
the so what now what mentality and yeah. that blue collar culture when adversity hits, what do you do? Yeah, and, and that that's that's the maybe the one of the you know I want to when when I when our players leave this program, I mean we're using basketball as a vehicle to teach them these lessons, yeah. these things that are going to go with them the rest of their life, the really important things mm -hmm. that uh, you know that they're they're using basketball to you know you don't even and as a young guy we were all that same way, mm -hmm. we didn't even understand we were like. Athletics kept us going to school. Yeah, and it kept yeah. us waking up in the morning. Yeah, but then it it enabled us to learn these lessons about blue collar and about how to re respond. You know, I always tell the guys that there's no difference between Michael Jordan, Tom Brady, and Brett Favre, and yeah. all these, you know, these elite of the elites. They're they're not absent of mistakes. What they are is they, they they always have the perfect response to those mistakes. Yeah. And the, and and those lessons are what separates the good from the great. Yes. Is the guys that can do that. And so, I actually got this from Chuck Pagano. Um, you know, we're, we're so lucky here in Boise. Is a lot of these great coaches have went through the football program and been through it, and then they moved back here. And so I've been able to get some relationships with those guys and, and just the opportunity to learn from those guys yeah. has been tremendous. But that was something that he always used is the so what, now what? So what, now what? And, and we really take that with our guys because in, in the game of basketball and, and in beyond is stuff's going to happen that you can't account for and that you can't plan. And, mm -hmm. that, and you're not going to go, like you said, no matter how hard you work, it's not going to just go from point A to point B. You're right. going to have all these setbacks and tests Absolutely, along man. the way that you can't control. And mm -hmm. it's how you respond to them. It's how you respond. No. And, and, and so, you know, it's interesting because I, I love to talk to people in different fields. You know, like you said, the, the entrepreneurs of the world and the, uh, the, the setbacks they're going to take, mm -hmm. you're going to face, the 200 no's that they're going to hear. Yeah. Uh, to be able to respond to that and go on. It's like the, you know, I was talking to a guy that caddied on the tour and I was asking him about this kind of situation. Like, well, yeah. how do you, how do you handle this? And, and he was just telling me a story about how he was caddying, you know, he's caddying for his brother and he was terrible at it because he'd get mad at his brother. Yeah, yeah, and they'd yeah. get like, no, you need to move on. Let's go to you. Right, right. And, but he then, then he realized like, I'm not treating him like I, I would, like an, if I was coaching someone normally. A player, yeah. yeah. So then he, he, you know, I said, well, what's the key to it? He said, well, it's just the, they're, the, as they're walking up the fairway and the guy hit a, you know, a, a shot and it hit a rock and bounced into the woods. And yeah. the guy's, you know, he goes, well, I almost let him have those moments of, oh, that's terrible luck. Can you believe it hit that rock? And right, right. yeah, 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 it's terrible. I can't right. believe that happened. Mm -hmm. And then get him to move on and respond the right way. Absolutely. And so, you know, I think the lesson is to be able to pick uh, the minds of other people and the, and, and not just in your field, but in any field yeah, to man. find these little gems of teaching and how to make things better. And, and that's what we've always done. And that's, you know, we're always trying to learn, always trying to make ourselves better. I mean, I know one thing, I'm a heck of a lot better coach 11 years after being named mm -hmm. head coach of Boise yeah. because, you know, I'm hungry to learn. I get to be around those people that have done it. Yeah. And you find those little hidden gems that they give you that make you a better coach. That makes and you said about picking the brains and connecting with certain people mm -hmm. and, and, and infiltrating that into what you're doing. So kind of touch on that because you are a guy, I mean, in this conversation, we, we've talked about John Stockton off camera, we mm -hmm. talked about Craig Elo, and we were talking yeah. about the NSYNC guy. I mean, yeah. you, the member from NSYNC. So you've been blessed with a lot of, uh, a wide right. range of relationships, man. Right, I mean, right, the people right. that you can pick your brain from. So how does one establish relationships like that and why have you taken so much uh, initiative and, and, and having great relationships and expanding your horizon and your sphere of influence? I think number one is because I enjoy it, first of all. Mm. I, I love getting to know new people and hearing their stories and, and then, you know, especially the, not just, you know, not like I, but I love to seek out those high achievers and what made them tick and how yeah. they got it done. And, and then to, when you hear their stories and when you start to learn from them, you realize like, Man, the stuff they had to go through and the grit they had to have and the perseverance and that that there's yeah. always those same themes that you see That's everywhere. That's true, yeah. And and you know, those are always inspiring to me and and 
so over the years I have, I, basketball has been amazing in the, in the relationships I've got to mm -hmm. have and the people I've got to meet and, sure. and not just the sports people, but outside of that, it's, it's been spectacular. And, mm -hmm. but I love to pick, you know, get, get to the level where you can have them open up and tell you some of these stories and, and totally, get, you know, it's, and, and then, you know, I pass those cause that's how I teach really in, in stories, you know, yeah. I'll, we'll talk about a, a topic about perseverance and then I'll be able to tell 10 stories about Chandler, how he persevered right. for through two years, Derek Alston, how he didn't play for two years, right, uh, right. John Stockton, how he, in his Hall of Fame speech, he said he wasn't his, the best player on his eighth grade team, he wasn't the best player on his high school team. Yeah. He claims he wasn't the best player on his college team, but I would well, disagree to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then ends up being one of the all-time best point guards ever. Ever. In the history of the NBA. So yeah. it's that perseverance, it's that consistency, it's that yeah. <laughs> understanding that you're on a journey and you, it's the ones that can keep going. Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me, that are going to make it. And I love seeing, like you said, I love when you talk to other successful people in the industries, when you have them open up yeah, yeah. and you have them really start to deliver the, the, the message and the dimes that help them become successful. Yeah. It takes a minute, but once they crack open, it's very valuable. So coach, my next question or final question would be, you've accomplished a lot. You've been around a lot of great, successful people. You've done such great things at Boy State basketball, all time winning as coach in history. What is the, the next steps? What is kind of the... Um, another goal or another milestone that you are pushing forward um, with your teams, with your teams to come at Boise State. Well, we've we've got a lot of them, and you know the the, the growth is like I, I always say, it's not linear. It's, it's you know it's up and down, and mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna have those moments. But we we get, we want to really keep taking this program. You know, the, look at like we said, Gonzaga Mark got there in about 1990, 90, uh, 89, 90, I think. Yeah, they had ten years of not good. Yeah. <laughs> they were not very good. And, yeah, man. and everyone thinks that he got to this place. I mean, it's been a 32 year process for him to get this program where it is now. Yeah, man. And he didn't do it alone. And it was, like I said, it was never just, hey, we, we, we were terrible and now we're great. You know, there were so many ups and downs. Yeah. And, and so that's kind of where we are with Boise State basketball is we're going to, I've got, but you got to have more than you got to have your administration, you got to have your your president, school president, you have to have your board of trustees. You got to have everybody pulling in the same direction. Yeah. And, that, and that's, you know, that's the next thing that with our new athletic director I'm excited about because he he gets it. He understands that's good. where we want to take it and so we have more people pulling the rope in the same direction and Yeah. But we have high high goals for this program and we're knocking on those doors mm -hmm. right now. And we're going to start kicking those in even more as we go forward. And, yeah. and uh, you know, every year I approach the job as, okay, if I took a new job, what would I be doing? Hmm. And this is, you know, I look at it and I'd be like, okay, I'd be doing this. I'd be doing this to make our culture better and get our culture in, not assuming that everybody knows it, but working hard. So right. these guys know it on a daily basis. We're, we're, we're talking about it and and building it because I think what the the thing that can happen if you're in somewhere too long you you're you can get bored with the process yeah you can be like well I'm, I'm tired of talking about this so let yeah. me do. and you leave out some crucial things yeah in the in you in the education of your guys uh Interesting. Of, of what it takes and you know COVID kind of really put a damper on that because we didn't have summer workouts with, mm -hmm. and that's where we usually integrate all that stuff so when we go into fall they know what we're doing they know what our expectations for sure so it was just kind of one of those crazy years that you did our we did everybody did our best to get through yeah and and i'm just happy that that we can turn the page and get back to our uh, our regular process where we, we work with these guys in development in the summer and mm -hmm. in the fall and and really instill those things that are important to us well coach your your knowledge on culture is is unmatched and once again, congrats again on your success. Thanks again for taking time. And uh, it's always a pleasure, man. Yeah, great to Absolutely. see you, D-Mac. Thank you guys for, uh, for tuning in.